this is my Bamboo Labs P1P, and uh, it's easily become my favorite printer over the last, I think, two or three months of owning it. This thing is super fast, it's reliable, it, the print quality is unbelievable. Like, it's just sick for something that you just take out of the box and go with. I went with the P1P over the X1 Carbon because of the price. Um, it was just far cheaper, and I didn't need all the bells and whistles that the X1 Carbon had. Uh, as you can see, though, the X1 Carbon is enclosed, which does benefit when printing with like more exotic materials and high temp materials and that is something i do want so in this video we're going to be upgrading our p1p to have an enclosure and to be able to print those materials we're going to do some other upgrades smaller ones um i'll include those as well and uh, if you guys enjoy please leave a like and subscribe as you can see the p1p is basically like an open frame design um it's sheet metal so i had to look online for a few different places to find an enclosure for it um, I did find one though, the Vision Enclosure on printables, um, there was a supplier in Europe that sold the plexiglass parts and stuff so it was easy to get those and that's basically the only reason why I went with that was just convenience. There was a lot of parts that had to be 3D printed and some that had to be bought. Um, I'll leave a link to everything I bought in the description and everything I printed because uh, some of the parts I added weren't a part of the vision enclosure they were kind of like other stuff I found that I just wanted on it and if you see them I'll just there'll be a link in the description for everything we started off by assembling the outer corners of the frame so this were the basically the shell that would kind of allow you to encase everything all of the uh, perspex panels and I ended up using the X1 carbon glass for the top but uh, yeah, so we're just, in this video, we're just taking apart the printer, uh, taking some of the screws out, installing new ones, uh, longer ones, 6mm M3 screws. Uh, I didn't show all four corners because it's basically, I think in total, there's, each corner has three screws in it. It's pretty easy. They have assembly, assembly pictures uh, with the vision enclosure on printables, and I'll include the link to that too. Then after assembling the four corners, I went around and started assembling the kind of uh, accent pieces, the handles, the hinges, uh, the part underneath that holds up the perspex sheets. Uh, this was just basically installing heat set inserts and just getting them ready to install on the printer. Um, there is a, I will leave a link to the heat set inserts I used. Um, as well for the cable chain later on, there is different heat set inserts you're supposed to use, but I ended up getting the standard size ones to work. Um, just by being very careful how I install them. We uh, started by assembling then the cable chains. So we started on the back where the br where we printed this bracket that will go straight on. Uh, I ended up printing this out ASA. The description on the printables page where it says PLA plus, but yeah, I wasn't trusting that. Um, yeah, so just be careful while you print it in. Um, you probably up your wall count and your infill and just, yeah. Give it a good try. I would advise like trying to snap the cable chain to it before you install it to the printer just to see if it fits perfectly as well. To mount the cable chain to the tool head, you want to remove the four screws at the back of the tool head. Um, so there's two on the left and two on the right. Uh, once you get them off, you'll be able to slide off the back of the tool head. Once you get the, the screws out, you can just pull off the back of the tool head. Uh, there it is there. It's uh, kind of difficult, but you have to push down the tab at the top and that'll give you access then to the rubber grommet where you can, you kind of need to pry it a bit. I struggled with it for a few minutes, but uh, you will get it if you try. You just keep trying. Once you get the rubber grommet to slide up, uh, the Bamboo Labs website tells you to cut it off. I didn't. Instead, I chose to slide mine further to the back of the printer. Um, just out of the way, that would end if I ever wanted to revert um, back to using it, I can. And I, I didn't cut it off, it's not destroyed. Then we can just grab our 3D printed adapter. Uh, this just allows the cable chain to basically connect to the tool head. It goes where the rubber grommet was, so it just slides in over the cable, and you push down kind of hard and you can feel a pop eventually. Uh, I was kind of nervous I didn't want to break it here, so yeah. But it's just a matter of popping it down and you'll feel a click into place. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, other thing I would recommend as well is make sure you print this with like 
a good decent amount of infill and a good wall count because again it's kind of a thin piece i printed this out of asa as well uh, it recommends pla plus but you know up to you so after i got those uh parts installed then i started mounting up the cable chain um what i decided to do with the cable chain was just mount what looked like the correct amount and then move the tool head around uh, to see if it snagged anywhere if it was too long and then just keep removing links till the till the cable chain basically fit perfectly then um you want to be careful this step i moved mine around by hand rather than using the actual screen to do it i guess um yeah so just take your time with this part make sure you do it right uh, there was no i don't think there was any specific length uh mentioned on the principles page but uh yeah this is also a 10 by 11 millimeter cable chain just in case you're wondering there'll be a link for it in the description after i got the ch cable chain mounted and all i uh, just did a quick test print just to see the motion system basically that was working um so yeah uh everything was fine uh then I had to go and add the PTFE clips. I don't have any video of that, but it's basically just these like uh, little square clips to go over the top of the cable chain just to hold the PTFE tube. Uh, I recommend doing one at the end, closest to where the film comes in, and then one closer to the tool. Uh, that just seemed to work for me. I then start getting the Perspex panels ready. So this involved like adding the magnets, the hinges, and the handles. Um, this is actually really easy. Uh, I used the company that was linked in the printables description. Uh, they were a German company called Netlaser, and these came perfect. Uh, most of the holes fit perfectly. Uh, I think two of them were too loose, but I ended up just using a little bit of super glue uh, to hold the magnets in there, and yep, yeah, works fine. Uh, the only thing I would say is I've, I've no experience making these myself, but I think I only paid like 80 euros. I don't know if that's expensive for Perspex, but I paid 80 euros for all the sheets that I got. Um, that was the back panel, the two sides, and the door. Oh, and it, they gave me the top panel as well, but I ended up using the bamboo glass panel because I plan on adding the AMS unit to this. We then added the side mounts that kind of hold on the Perspex. So uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned, I don't think on the assembly of always is you have to put nuts uh, underneath the printer and then go from the top with the screw or from the side with the screw basically um, this is how you mount them uh, I didn't see that on the printables thing but there you go I printed these hinges I don't really like the design of these hinges from the vision enclosure uh, they're not great like I would like if they easily had like a quick release system or something like that but they don't um, so this is kind of the best you can get for the vision enclosure as far as I can see so far um, they do work um, perfectly they just you know it'd be nice if there was a quick release so you can just take off the door as well as how easily you can take off the side panels um, so yeah that's just something to keep in mind maybe there's a, a mod out there or something uh, I guess I'll have to have a look so this is me adding a side mounted spool holder uh, I just went with this because this P1P is in a print farm, kind of like on lack tables, and it's kind of hard to reach in behind to change the spool. So, yeah, I went with a side mounted option. Um, I'll leave a link for this spool holder in the description. Um, it's pretty cool, works well. Uh, again, I printed this from A, no, it was ASA. I printed this in, and again, good bit of infill and good wall, uh, good wall count. I think it was like five walls or something like that, but it's pretty stiff and sturdy, does the job. I then started printing this uh, kind of shoot to catch the filament that gets ejected out the back of the uh, P1P. I don't know if it's just me, but I find that such a annoying feature that I just, like, especially on the farm, because like, it's like just shooting it out the back of it behind the lock table and it's like impossible to get to. So I'm hoping this will help. It's magnetic, so it just sticks to the back of the P1P, which is great. Um, yeah, I'll leave a link in the description for this too. I then went along and added these anti-vibration feet, so you just rip off the old ones and add these feet and they're supposed to basically cut down on the vibrations from the machines, but they're also supposed to stop the P1P from being affected by uh, the vibrations of other machines around it, so it kind of works brilliantly for me. Uh, these this thing's sitting beside four or five other printers um, that are constantly all going at the same time, so yeah, if this helps, I actually might even 
figure out a way to print something to add these to my other ones it does seem to add a lot of play uh, into the frame so it the frame will rock back and forth as it's printing and the shoot itself where the uh, kind of waste filament comes out there's a little metal tab in there that shakes a lot more with these feet on but I don't know if it helps I don't mind the noise like this is already a pretty loud printer as it is so yeah probably a good model I'll update you guys on it see what, what happens so now that I got everything assembled I just ran a calibration test on the P1P and that was basically it um, I'm gonna do an update in about a month's time to see how these mods kind of worked and how they've improved the printer or you know I've already noticed I can print ABS and stuff like that practically you know flawlessly effortlessly um, yeah but I have more videos coming uh, I've been kind of I haven't uploaded a video in a year so I have a video coming hopefully in two or three weeks I'm gonna just kind of do these slowly because I think that was my problem with my last videos I was just rushing them out the door to get them done and wasn't really enjoying it so then I never really bothered doing another one but uh, now I'm gonna take my time with these and do just smaller videos uh, yeah hope you guys enjoy uh, I'll see you in the next one